So the way a flow cell is kind of set up is it's got, where's my pen? It's kind of basically a water channel that goes around and through this ASIC panel. Um, so you add your buffer into this hole under this flap here and the water channel flows along through here and then down round here and out into this waste channel. So when you are adding buffer, you have to be very careful. The one kind of main rule of, of loading a flow cell is not to introduce air bubbles because if you add air bubbles to here, any part of the surface that has air on it, you will kill the pores and they won't work. So if you have a bubble in a corner and then you don't, you know, it stays in that corner, you will only destroy um, the pores in that corner. But if you then push that bubble along through the channel, then you will destroy all of the active pores that that bubble has gone across. So if you do find a bubble, it's really important not to try and dislodge it because you could make things worse. But the best thing is just to not get air bubbles in in the first place. Um, so I'm going to hopefully explain how to do that um, with some things that I've kind of picked up on the way. So what you'll see on yours and also on mine, because these are used ones, is that the panel will have kind of a clear liquid and it probably also has some beads in it from a previous loading run. But if you have a new one, you'll see that it's, it's much more yellow and that's the storage buffer that it comes in. So I think you can kind of see the difference if I show you the pair there. So what you'll see when you add more buffer to a new one, the sequencing buffer, is that you will push the yellow out and it will become clear. And that's how you kind of, you can tell that it's gone um, through. But as I say, the main important thing is to not add bubbles. And the way I do this is to kind of add a few extra kind of precautionary steps just to, to really make sure that we're not adding any bubbles in. So I'm just using water as this practice test. Um, but when you do the loading for real, you'll make up um, a sequencing buffer. But as I say, we'll just use water for this practical. So to start with, so with the um, buffer port, so it's called the priming port, and you'll see here that it flicks open like that, so it twists round and there's a little hole underneath. This little hole is designed to fit a P1000 tip, so hopefully you'll see if you put your P1000 tip in that it fits sort of perfectly into that hole. And you should always use um, a P1000 to load any of your um, buffer into the into the flow cell. So because these are old ones, you might find that you have some bubbles already in your sort of channel. Uh, but what you should find in new ones is that it's entirely kind of liquid from the entrance hole all the way down and through. Um, but what I tend to do, so whenever you're doing anything with loading um, buffer into a flow cell, I don't use the plunger. I always use the, uh, the, the I think it's called the thumb wheel, because you have much better control over what you're loading in. And if you accidentally plunge a load of air in then of course you're gonna ruin your chip so I always use the the twisty plunger it does make it a little bit slower but it does mean you've got a lot better um, control over the uh, the amount of liquid or or whatever you put in um, so when you load the buffer we'll kind of do it in the way that you would do it when you actually load a flow cell so to begin with you're supposed to add 800 uh, microliters of your buffer to wash out all of the um, storage solution. But before I load anything, just to make sure that I've got no air within uh, my sort of channel, is I put my tip in and I very gently suck up a small amount of liquid, only a couple of microliters. Hopefully you can kind of see it coming up my tip there. I'll just take a bit more so you can see it. And if you have taken liquid up, you know that there is liquid all the way between the hole and the panel. So you can then just get rid of that liquid. And then you can start to add 
your 800 microliters of buffer. So you could just suck that as normal. But then, again, just to make sure that you're definitely not introducing any air bubbles, by using the wheel, if you just gently make a drop, so hopefully you can see that there, and put the drop over the top of your port and put the, the pipette into that drop, you know that you're then, it's like a water, a liquid to liquid surface, so you know that you're not introducing any air bubbles. And then you can gently, using the thumb wheel, twist and in, uh, introduce the buffer into the flow cell. And you should see, if it was a new one, you'll see that the uh, panel will go from yellow to clear. Um, and you'll also see that liquid should be forced out and down and round into the, the waste channel. So when you've added most of that, I would always again leave a little bit in the bottom of the pipette just so you know that you're not introducing any liquid. You can then let that go. Um, and that's the first lot of buffer added. So hopefully you won't have introduced any air into that. It's also, it's a bit of a skill at the uh, when you first do it, but it's kind of helpful to keep an eye on how much you're adding with your pipette and then keep another eye on the channel that runs between the hole and the panel. Because if you see any air bubble movement between the two, then you can stop it before it goes into the panel. So <laughs> it's a bit difficult to do to begin with. It's hard to concentrate on two things at once. But you can sort of keep an eye and make sure that there's nothing moving, apart from water, of course, between the two. And you should see that if it's pure water, the channel will be dark. And if, it's, if there's no water, if there's air in it, then it will be sort of light grey like that. So that's the first step of loading buffer. So you add the, your 800 microliters. Um, during the protocol, you have to leave that for a little bit, um, but because we're not properly loading it. The next step is to open the spot on port. So this, you just pull up and over. So it's attached by a little um, piece of sticky paper, but it's, as I say, it kind of flips up like that. It doesn't matter if you break it off, but other, it can be a bit more tricky to get it back on again. And hopefully what you can see is there's a little hole there and that's the spot on hole and that's where you eventually we will add our um, sample to. Um, we're not doing that yet but for the next part of adding buffer you have to have that hole open because I suspect you have to make sure that there's no um, storage buffer anywhere kind of within the ASIC panel so I think it's just a case of making sure um, it's all storage buffer and there's nothing trapped in the little hole. Um, but it's the same principle. This time we're just adding 200 microliters, but I'm going to do the same thing again, just to be really, really sure that I haven't introduced any air bubbles. Um, so all buffer always goes into this hole here with the P1000. Um, you only ever really load anything into the spot on hole if it's um, if it's sample. So if you're using the P1000, it always goes into this um, priming port. But as I say, to begin with, for the second time, I'll just suck up a small amount of um, buffer just to make sure that there's no air bubbles between um, the hole and the channel panel. Get rid of that. And then as I say, I can now add 200 microliters um, of my buffer back into the same priming hole. This time, because you have this hole, the spot on hole open, you'll find that it sort of it starts to suck liquid through without you pushing it. So when you make your bubble, you have to be quite quick because it sometimes starts to suck the liquid through. And hopefully you should see that when I'm pushing liquid through, it kind of comes out of the spot on hole a bit. I think you can just about see it there. And that's so we're just cleaning out that hole. So you gently using the thumb wheel Twist your buffer down, not quite to the end, but just so there's a little bit left. And there you go. So that's how you add your buffer. So now our, our, uh, our flow cell is 
primed and, and ready to add the sample. Um, and I think it depends on the kit, but usually you have roughly about 75 microliters of, of sample to add. So I tend to use a P200 to do that. Um, so with this, it's a, a slightly different way of loading it. You don't push the pipette tip in because you don't want to introduce anything other than sample to this spot on hole. Um, you do it by sort of dripping it gently into the hole. It should then suck the liquid in um, but you need to have both holes open because you need that sucking motion if you close the priming port it won't suck it through and your sample will just sit on the top um, so you don't want that so you have to have both holes open and then so you can use the plunger to do this but you just need to gently make a drop drop it on and then you should see that your sample will get sucked gently through um, and onto the uh, the panel. So you don't want to, as I say, press your pipette in. You don't want to do that because you risk adding air into the panel. So with this one, you just want to drop it on. And that's the flow cell loaded. So then when you're running it, when you're starting to run it, you just need to gently put the, um, lids back on the holes, close the flow cell, and it's done. So there we go. That's how to uh, load buffer and also load your, load your sample.